and welcome to Brush and Bubbles. Today we are going to be painting an acrylic lily pad pond scene. This is perfect if you haven't painted in years or since school or if you're a complete beginner to painting because I'm going to be showing you exactly what we're doing step by step. So to start with I'm just going to talk you through what you will need to create this painting at home. To start with I would just cover up your table with some tablecloth or old newspaper You'll then need a canvas, I've got an 8x10 canvas here, a palette to pop all your paints on, a couple of different brushes, I've got a medium shaped square brush and then a sort of pointy one for more of the details, some kitchen towel, a cup of water and then some acrylic paints. So I've got a whole array of paints here and once we get started I'll be talking you through which shades I'm going to be using and I'll be showing you how to mix them up but please feel free to have a little experiment with your colours you don't have to match my painting at all. You can go rogue and just have fun with it. So once you are all set up, let's get started with our painting. So for this painting, I have a whole array of colours. I've got red, purple, a magenta -y pink, a lighter green, a slightly darker green, blue, yellow and white paint. Equally, like I mentioned, you can use any colours that you wish for your painting. To start with, we are just going to paint the whole of the background and this is going to be the background of our pond. So you can go with any sorts of shade of pond colour that you like. I'm actually going to go for more of a light pastel shade for my painting. So I'm going to do more of a sort of turquoisey duck egg blue, I would say. So what I'm going to do for that is just pick up my medium brush. And I'm going to start by moving over the paint to another dish so I can mix it up and then go in to my painting. But I'm going to be painting in a really abstract way just because I think it's nice to be quite free when you're painting water so you can add in different shades and tones and texture with the brush and the paint. So to start with, I'm just going to move over some white paint to a different dish. And then I'm going to add some blue paint and give it a really good mix. I'm then just going to add a tiny touch of green to this because I want to give it more of a turquoise shade. So I'm just going to slowly add a bit of green and mix it up. Once you're happy with the shade, what I would then do is add a couple of drops of water in with your paint. And the reason we do this is just to let the paint become a little bit more fluid and it's easier to paint with. And then once you're happy and you've mixed it all up, all we're gonna do is apply this to the whole of the background of the canvas. And I would just keep adding water as you go just to help it become more fluid. And don't worry if you get some streaks in there, it's quite nice, like I mentioned, we're painting water so we want it to look natural. And I'm just gonna start painting this all over the entire background of my canvas and when you get to the edges you just want to paint the sides you want to paint the top and the bottom just make sure you're covering the whole canvas up with this shade of paint so i would just go ahead and cover yours up now Once you've covered up your whole background with this shade, what we want to start doing now is adding a few different tones in the water. So what I would start doing, and you can either use your medium brush or if you want to, you can swap over to your smaller brush. We're just going to start picking up some paint. So I've got a little bit of blue here. You don't want too much on your brush, you just want to be able to control it. So I'm just dashing off some excess on my palette. I'm just going to go in and start adding some streaks into this paint that we've already got on 
our canvas. And the nice thing is, is because the paint underneath is still wet, you can start to blend it in just by adding a little bit of water, dabbing it off in your kitchen towel, and then going back in. And you just want to start adding some movement and texture in the water. You can be quite free with your brush strokes. I'm just adding the water to almost help it blend. And you'll see it'll start to get quite streaky. You can always go back in if you want and pick up some of the first shade you had and add that back in there. We just want to start building up these layers of different shades and different color. And as you can see, I'm being very abstract with how I'm applying the paint. I'm not being uniform or neat at all. We don't want to be neat because essentially we're painting the water. So we want it to look like it's got movement in there and it's fluid and free. So just start adding a bit of blue paint to your background. So once you've done that, I think the trick is, is not over blending. We're now gonna do the same thing with a slightly different shade. So I'm now just gonna pick up some green paint. And the way to really help this mix in is definitely by adding the water. I think often people are scared to add water when they're painting, but actually it does help us out. I would always just say, just add it to your brush, dab it on your kitchen towel, and then go back in with it. So you haven't got like too much water, but just enough. So what I'm gonna do now is just pick up my darker shade of green, it's more of a sort of emerald shade. And I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna start streaking this into the water exactly like I did with the blue. And I might even pick up some of my first color just to help that blend in. I might pick up a bit of water, dab it off, go back into the painting. But you'll start to see we're just building up all of these different layers and tones within our water. So once you've added in these details to your water, what we're going to do is just leave it to dry before we move on to the lily pad and the flower. So once our painting is nice and dry, we're now going to move on to painting the lily pad. So I would just pick up your smaller brush and all we want to do is create a nice light green shade. So I'm going to start by using the lighter shade of green that I've got here and I'm just going to pick it up and move it to the section that I was using to dash my green off before. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of white paint and mix it in till I get a nice pastel shade. Once you're happy with your lighter shade of green, we're now just gonna move over to our canvas. And we just want to draw in where we want this lily pad to go. Now this is a sort of oval-like shape on its side. So we just want to make sure that we're starting small and then we can make it bigger and bigger and bigger as we wish. So I'm gonna place mine around here and we just want to start painting in that oval-like shape onto our water. And the reason we start with a lighter shade of green is that we can just add on top of it. So just start making yours bigger and bigger until you're happy with the side. Just making sure you're keeping that oval shape in mind as you paint. So I've got my sort of first oval lily pad shape in there. And the nice thing about this is, is you don't have to be too neat. It doesn't need to be 
exact, it's nature, so it needs to look nice and natural. And all I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna start picking up some of the other shade of green, the slightly darker one, dashing it off. I might even mix it in with that other shade I've got there. And then we're just gonna start adding a few highlights and tones to this. And you can be quite dashy with your brush strokes, but you just want to start getting in that other shade and mixing it in while the paint underneath is still wet. Once you've added that, you might also just want to add a little bit of a lighter shade. So all I'm going to do is pick up some white paint and mix it in with my green. But I'm going to mix up a lighter shade than I had to start with. So it's much more of a mint green. And then with this, we can go in and add a couple of sort of swoops of highlight. And I'm actually keeping my brush strokes to the shape of the lily pad. So I'm sort of rounding it around the corner. And when it's more flat, it's more straight. So just get a sense of just adding in those highlights to the lily pad. Once you've got that in there, what we want to do is we just want to give it a little bit of depth. So all we want to do is add a tiny bit of a darker shade underneath where the lily pad sits, just a tiny, tiny amount. So what I'm gonna do is wash off my small brush And I just want to mix up an emerald green. So I'm going to pick up some blue paint and add a little bit of green to it and give it a good mix. So this just gives you a dark sort of bluey emerald colour. And what we can do with this is very carefully underneath the lily pad is just very lightly paint a line just underneath this curve. And all it's going to do is just suggest a slight shadow where the lily pad hits the water. Again, don't worry if it's not neat, it just needs to be a suggestion. Once you are happy with that, what we're going to do is just dash off any excess paint from this brush. We only want a tiny amount on our brush and what we're going to do is pick up a little bit of water and add it to that paint you've just dashed off your brush. And with this more wash consistency paint, we're just going to start doing a few ripples underneath this lily pad. And by that I mean I'm just very hardly touching my brush down, we just want some wobbly lines just around where the lily pad is just as a little bit of extra reflection and movement in the water. So just keep adding water to your brush because we only just want a tiny bit of paint on there and just dash it in and around and I'm just focusing it mainly around this lily pad. Now this is your choice. You might want to add another lily pad, you might want to add a couple. It's totally, totally up to you. Please feel free to add anything that you wish. I'm just going to wait for this to dry and then I'm going to go in and show you how to do the flower. So you might just want to do one complete one and then you can decide if you want to do any more. So once your lily pad is dry, we're now going to move on to our flower. So for this we want to use our small brush to so just make sure it's nice and clean. And what we're going to do is we're just going to create a nice light pink shade as the base for our flower. So I'm just going to pick up some of my white paint and move it to a dry area of my palette. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of pink. You can equally use purple. You might want to use red and mix up your own pink. You might want to use yellow. It's totally up to you. But I'm just going to use some magenta pink and white. What I'm going to do with this light pink is just draw in the shape of my flower. So essentially they've got these sort of pointy like leaves which are lovely and there's loads of them and they sort of overlap. And what we essentially want to do is create quite an abstract looking 
lotus leaf um, on our pond. So what I would suggest is just drawing in your first leaf and all I tend to do is load up my paint brush with the paint and just find an area of a lily pad, I'm going to go to the middle and I'm just going to create a sort of lily-like shape with my brush, bringing it to a point at the top. And what we're going to start doing is just building up all of the petals around this one. So now I've got that one. I'm now going to start from the same point. I'm going to bring the shape up, coming off to the side and then sweeping back round to the middle and fill it all in. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. around as well when it comes here it sort of swoops around a little bit Once you've got your main shape in there, you can then go back in and just give it a little bit more detail if you want. You can just carefully bring the petals up to more of a point. But what we're going to start to do is just layer on different shades of pinks and reds and yellows all into our petals until they're nice and full and colourful. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pick up some of this pure magenta, mix it into a little corner of my previous shade of pink and I'm not going to overly mix it. I'm just going to then go in and start adding flecks of this colour into each petal. Just being really free with your paintbrush. It's quite nice when you get streaks of the actual paint right in there. You just want to start building it up being abstract, keeping it free until you're happy with how your flower is looking. I'm now going to pick up a little bit of yellow and I'm not washing off my brush because I like the fact that there's some paint on my brush already. I'm just going to add a bit of it to the middle maybe and some of the petals as well. So just do a little dance now between all the colours that you want to add to your flower and just start building up the paint. It's nice if the paint is nice and thick. You might even want to go in and add a tiny bit of pure white in there just to give it like a pop of highlight and reflection. also want to create another another petal at the front so you might just want to add like a little bit more detail on your on your flower just drawn in these two petals at the front and then I'm only outlining them with a little bit of the more bright shade of paint so you can see them. going to add some white into the centre of the flower just to make it pop a little bit more and then if you want to you can go back in with some yellow and do the same thing. 
just dabbing it on. Once you're happy with your flower, we just want to give a little reflection of it on the lily pad. So just wash off your little brush. And then I would just pick up some of that darker shade of green, like we did last time. We want to make it into more of a wash. So I'm gonna add it to my palette and then I'm gonna add quite a bit of water to it. Load up my paintbrush with this wash consistency. And I'm gonna dab it off on my kitchen towel before I go in, because we want hardly any paint on our brush. And then what we can do is just dash this underneath the area of the flower, touching it and then just bringing it out slightly, just so it looks like reflection. Again, you don't want any too much paint on your brush. I'm just gonna dash off some more and go back in. What we can then do is just wash off our brush again and now we can add some pink reflection in our water. So I'm just gonna pick up some of this pink that I had for my petals. And again, I don't want too much on my brush. I'm just gonna dab it off on my kitchen towel. And then just where we've got this water reflection, we just want to start adding in a few very subtle dashes of pink within the water, just around where the flower would be reflecting. So they wouldn't come over here. They would only be directly underneath where the flower is. We can just start adding them into the water. You might also want to add a tiny bit of white reflection as well. So again, just pick up some white paint, add some water to it, dab it off and then go back in. So this is your moment just to touch up your flower. If you want to, I might just add some green back in there and just smooth out this reflection, I mean the shadow, sorry. And if you wish, you can then go ahead and add another lily pad or a couple of lily pads if you wish in exactly the same way. So you might want to have one coming off the side of the canvas. You might want one at the very top. It's totally up to you, but this is your moment to add another lily pad and flower if you wish. Once you've added in another flower, however many flowers you want, the last finishing touch is just to add a touch of highlight to our water. So I'm actually going to use my medium brush and just make sure it's clean. All I'm going to do is pick up a little bit of the blue paint that I had to start with, which was just the blue and the white and a tiny bit of green together. And with this square sort of shaped brush, which has got a very thin end, I'm just gonna do a couple of dashes in the water in and amongst these other reflections, just to add a pop of highlight to our water. Just very carefully, just dashing on very light touches of these lines and try not to be too uniform with them. And it just sort of brings the water to life with the reflection.
So the lovely thing about this painting is you can just go on and on adding reflections and flowers and lily pads, but as soon as you're happy with how many you've added to your painting, you have then completed your lily pad pond masterpiece. If you liked this painting tutorial, please just give us a little thumbs up. It means the absolute world to us. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can just subscribe to our channel and you'll get a little notification whenever we've got a new video up. Thank you everyone. Bye.